you've got such an interesting background and you've been able to pursue your passion, walk away from that, what people consider safe, stable, you know, path that we're all set on from early childhood to do what's uniquely you. So tell me, how did you uh, go from education to being an artist? Hmm. You know, when you're an artist or even an educator or any of those professions that kind of come from your, your soul, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of always were, I guess. So as a kid, I was always, you know, creative. I was always mm -hmm. artsy, but I was also always an educator by nature and went into education professionally. Mm -hmm. Never did anything art related uh, other than be creative. But my my job as an educator, I taught English and history, worked with students with um, different learning styles. My degree is in special ed behavioral disorders. So it was nothing art related. But in January 2015, for I had babysitter on a Friday night. My kids, I always say they were right out of the wrapper. They were like this big. <laughs> I, I said to my husband, you know, let's do something different. Why don't we go do one of those little like painting with a twist classes? You know, where yes, women- Yes, I love that. Yeah, and he, but my husband was like, nah, I'm not going to go hang out with a bunch of women and drink wine. He's like, but what I will do is I'll take you to Michael's. I'll buy you anything you want and we'll paint at home. Nice. So I had a nudge. I had an urge. I said, yes, he agreed. And we went to Michael's. We, had, we knew nothing. We're like buying like the value packs and stuff, you know, whatever's on sale, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that night I was like, Robbie, I'm going to paint you an elephant. And, you know, I painted him this elephant and he was like, and it wasn't great, but you could see that there was promise there. Huh. And he was like, I, I think you're good. And I could feel it because something awoke in me that had been dormant for decades. Mm -hmm. And so every night I would come home from work, you know, the long days, you know, the commute, you know, they, I, I was, I tutored for SATs as well. So the side job as well, but I come home, put the kids, make dinner, put the kids to bed and I would paint. And it just, it, it snowballed after that. And by, that was January, 2015, by June 2016 so a year and a half later right. the writing was on the wall I began to hate my job that I want you know that I once loved even though it was always grueling yeah. and uh you know there were some um arrows that pointed in the direction that your time is up here you know, we could you know maybe we'll get into that maybe we won't and uh and then I went in August 1st 2016 for the upcoming school year and I said I can no longer do this when mm -hmm. I know I can do that and so I gave them the year and in 2017 I walked out and that was to be a professional artist or at least find success in being creative and uh yeah yeah and you know I look Ooh, back man. and I'm like what kind of cojones you know <laughs> I, I, yeah when you're in it when you're in it it just seems natural the the logical next step but when you're looking at it from the outside or in the rear view mirror you're like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah but at the time it was the only thing that made sense imagine I'm going to my husband and I'm like I'm making six figures and I go to my husband and I'm like yeah I want to quit my job and be an artist <laughs> Oh. Thanks to you. Thanks to you and us painting that elephant night. Thank you so much for helping yeah. me find my purpose. So. Right, right. So here I am. Wow. You know what? There, there's so much there. And and we do, I mean, we're kind of trained the Western culture mindset is to, you know, follow that one path. That's all we do, you know, looking for that fictional goal watch and all the pads on the back. But as we grow and develop, man, there's so many other opportunities and you were powerful and brave enough to just step into it. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. It, especially if you were starting to feel a little burned out, which I think a lot of people experience and it, it just comes out in different ways, but it's not serving them to continue doing what they're doing. Yeah. And you know, you know what I find? We all have different belief systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have different mm -hmm. either religious belief systems or non-religious, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, there is some supportive source out there that guides us along the way. It could be internal, external, again, call it God, call it universe, call it energy, whatever it is you want to call it. But it's guiding us the whole way. And we're so distracted by life. 
like we don't even really see it. So mm -hmm. I was getting all sorts of signs like it's time to make a change. You're no longer happy here. But in my head, I got to make the money, got to feed my babies, got to, mm -hmm. you know, and I, there was an identity attached to it. Like I was Miss Sardano. Yeah. I was a director of student development. I don't know what any of that means, but that's kind of, that was my identity. And yeah. I had this belief that this is, this is just what you do regardless. Right. But There's some prestige this, that goes with it. Again, yeah. part of that Western mindset. Like, yeah. who am I if I don't have this title, if I'm not with this organization? Who am I? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And all the signs were there. And it's funny. It just came to me now. I haven't thought about this in so long, but I picked up the paintbrush in, like I said, in 2015, January, mm -hmm. 2015. In March, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis mm. and we had just had a new head of school come in. So the head of school prior to this one, uh, he left in like 2012 or 2013. I was the golden child. So I got to do, be, say whatever I wanted. Then this new guy comes in, we have opposing philosophies. So all of these little things are popping up because I'm sure you know, rheumatoid arthritis is exacerbated by stress first and foremost. So I got all these little pieces, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember in 2014, when I was like, right before all the shit hit the fan and I was like, you know, the height of my game before I knew I could paint, before I knew I had RA, I had just married my husband. I was sitting in my office with somebody I worked with who was looking for another job because mm -hmm. our working conditions weren't ideal. And I said, and I looked around, I had the big office. I had all my, oh no, I didn't have my artwork yet, but I had the big office with all the windows. And I sat back in my chair and I'm like, Tom, I've been here. I've been in education for 20 something years. I've been here for about 15 years. Where am I going? I'm going to die in this chair. Mm -hmm. And I meant like, I thought I'll be here forever, whatever. It's easy. And then it kicked into high gear. Then the RA, then the boss hated me. Then I started painting. And I find when, those forces or like I said, God, angels, guides, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, when they know it's time for you to make the change, they, it, however you want to personify it, oh, they let you know. <laughs> and it's up for and us. And if you're not listening, oh. they, yeah, you, if you're not listening, they try even harder, they amp it up to let you know. Oh, they do. Yeah. They do. In, in 10 recommendments, I make the joke and it's a little bit crass, but I say, you know, you always get these opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes with a tickle of a feather and then it comes with a little smack to the head, maybe a little nudge in the arm. And, and then it takes a, sometimes a good old twat punch. <laughs> oh, oh, ow. <laughs> you know winds up and lets you know and I was getting like you know yeah it, it was coming at me hard and fast and then and I left and oof, have I'm a look back. Never you have a back. look back I yeah. love that and, and I'm happy that you were able to deal with the rheumatoid arthritis I too have a chronic medical condition and yes yeah, stress I have given up a lot of a lot of things, material, prestigious, whatever, because if they're not bringing me joy, serving me, then it's not worth it. It is not yeah. worth it. I'd, I'd rather just, I'd rather not. <laughs> you know? and, and people don't always get that if they haven't been where we've, we've been, where you have to choose, you know, do I want to live or do I want to just exist? And yeah. I want to live. And you want to live. I can see it. You got such a light, such a joy about you. But it wasn't, always like this you, you have had a dysfunctional background so yeah, yeah. you've got some history there and how did that turn into this personal success story you know nothing happens overnight you know I think we live in a society in a culture that people are looking for the magic pill or the switch you know and they right. want to be fixed and they want to be better and fortunately for me, I was, it was, I was too dumb to know that that was even, you know, an option, right. but I did th everything I'm about to tell you is really the, the foundation of 10 recommendments for personal empowerment. I wrote the book based on this, based on the fact that I, I began what I call a dumpster fire of an existence. Mm. And through the lessons that I learned, I utilized the wisdom that I gleaned, applied it you know, made different choices and my trajectory shifted. And now I live in this beautiful space. It's easy to say that in a 30 second soundbite, but we're talking about, I mean, I'm 51 years old. So we're talking about a span of many, many years to turn the train around, create mm -hmm. momentum, push it in a different direction. 
but uh but for me you know again we all have our stories you know the parents the mother was neglectful the father was abusive they got divorced when i was young i ran away when i was 14 i didn't have self-esteem you know the list goes on mm -hmm. i went to college paid student loans till i was 35 because i was raised by wolves and there was nobody there for me and i had no you know whatever oh let's talk about boyfriends pattern after pattern of abuse and neglect and the this and the drugs and the all of it right Right. You just keep picking the same person. They look different, but you yeah. realize later, I have been totally. dating the same person over and over and contributed to my own dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah. For a decade, it was the same guy. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I'm like, I don't understand. It's not me. Oh, no, it was me. Because my belief about myself was that I deserved this sort of behavior or I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. So you asked, how did I make the shift or when does that change? And it changes when you take a moment and you say, wait a minute, my circumstances are shittier than I want them to be. It's time to make a change. Mm -hmm. The change begins with me. And how do I do that? And I just started looking and, you know, tracing it back. Cause a lot of people have the ability to go back and say, well, I'm this way because my mother fell in the blank. And right. I'm this way because this happened, fill in the blank. Right, but then they stop that. there. They carry it and they stop there. They don't say, okay, I am this way because this happened. But yet, what did I learn from that? Like what belief about myself? Like I had an experience when I was 14 that the child's belief, and this is how I outline it in the book, actually. Like I'll tell mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. And I'll say from the adult perspective, yeah, these people were dysfunctional themselves and they had their own issues and it's just information. And it's for me to discern that information. But the child walked away with, I am garbage and I should be treated as such. Mm -hmm. So if we don't go back and examine what we believe about ourselves based on these things mm -hmm. and stop blaming the players because they wouldn't treat us that way if they weren't treated that way. Hurt people hurt people. I could throw every cliche at you. But when my, if my belief is I'm garbage and I should be treated as such, then every pattern in my life will reflect that. So I, I learned how to, when I had experiences, to lurk back and go, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. This is because clearly if I am not content in this aspect of my life, it's because something about me is believing that I don't deserve contentment. What is that? Or something. Everybody, right. it's different, you know? And so I started making these shifts and you have to make the difficult decisions, right? Mm -hmm. You know, do I reconcile with my mother who was completely toxic when I know it's no good to me? You know, do I allow my children's biological father um, the freedoms and the liberties that he has taken when it's creating abandonment issues in my children just because he's the father? Do right. I, you know, and again, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. Am I worthy of better? And then doing those those things, right? And coming and and that's the starting point for me was realizing that I am worthy. You know, beyond the limiting beliefs and the background and whatever people say that you know I'm worthy. I deserve better. And, and so many people have not yet reached the point that they believe they deserve better and act on that. Yeah. So yeah, you got through that cycle of abuse and neglect and got into education. I mean, it's it, just hearing your story, it's very remarkable what you've been able to accomplish and, and you've gone into helping professions, mentoring teachers and student development and now in art. Is, is art also a way of educating people or is it commercial art or, or what do you do with your art? Hmm. So, so the art obviously began with my just doing something that brought me joy. Right. And then my intent when I decided to leave my job was to create income. So it was commercial, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't art therapy or anything like that. It was a commercial thing. Mm -hmm. And I really believed I'm like, you know, people are starving artists. I'm like, step back, watch, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be the one to show that that's not a true statement. Right. Okay. So but what happened was when we tap into our creativity mm -hmm. and we do things that bring us joy, our intuition, it expands in tandem with our creativity. 
Mm-hmm. So we start to, you know, an intuition, it could be mystical, but it's really just about being better connected to ourselves and the world around us. That's all mm-hmm. it is. Right. Excuse me. So I began to, life just began to get more beautiful and I began to get, become more intuitive and, and, and people that were in alignment with me began to show up and more experiences began to show up. So what was a, a journey about becoming an artist by the way, my follow-up to 10 Rex is about all of this. It's called right. Beyond the 10, Decoding the Woo-Woo. It's coming the in woo-woo. December. Shameless plug. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the but, uh, but I started to realize without realizing it that I was on a spiritual journey. It was not intentional. Mm-hmm. I didn't like grab every crystal I could find and go on YouTube and, you know, and really like, you know, become, you know what I mean? Like, you know, moonlight rituals. It wasn't like that. It was mm-hmm. like, I really began to rediscover myself. And in doing that, when I opened the gallery in 2019, and this is to answer your question, it became an art gallery and intuitive lounge because they really grow in tandem. So, so the art is for my pleasure. And the art is for sale. And I do groups there. Like I'll do like painting groups and stuff. Like it just says like, if, like they're private groups, like if they want, mm-hmm. but it's really more, I do intuitive guidance. I help people better rediscover themselves through creativity, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be art. And so I've kind of merged my educational background, my spiritual journey, my, my artistic nature. Um, and I guess my my humanitarian nature to bring it to the world. Thank you. Thank you for doing (laughs) that and for showing others how to do it. And and we don't focus enough on the spiritual side, the intuitive side, the emotional intelligence, whatever you want to call it, because it really does. If you just listen to what your environment, what your body is telling you, it really can lead you to a better place and people who are in alignment with you. That's always the scary part when you embark on something new, you know, even if you have family support to really do anything, you need community. And it is just incredible how new people appear in your life and, and, you know, want to help, want to be part of what you're doing. That is just the most remarkable thing that you begin to attract like-minded people when you're open to it and get out of your house and and (laughs) away from the television morning noon and night and and just interact and engage and be willing to give with an open hand that's right up my alley yeah I call them unicorns I call them unicorns unicorns because they're magical people Mm -hmm. these unicorns they fall out of the sky and, what, and, you, and you probably could relate to this. When you start to change the script and do things because you understand your worthiness, mm-hmm. the people in your lives, you know, if, they, if you don't send out a memo saying, oh, by the way, I'm changing, things are going to change around here. You start to create dissonance in relationships that you no longer align. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, those relationships, some of them just kind of dissipate, right, with distance. Some of them, it's like a blowtorch, a bridge burning, like depending on the nature and the intimacy of the relationship. But when those relationships that we cling on to because of longevity or intimacy, when Mm -hmm. we are willing to let go of those relationships, the unicorns, they're just waiting at stage left to come in and be a part of your life and bring you to the next level. It's it's an amazing, and again, I refer to the woo-woo book, but I break down all of this mystical stuff into formulas. Mm -hmm. It's truly a formula of how this whole thing works out. It's really cause and effect cut and dry. And it's, uh, and, and when I began to understand it was a formula and practice my life with intention, rather than let's just see where it goes, the, the the speed in which I grow, evolve, expand, have a greater, wonderful life. It's, it's, oh my God, it's, it's exponential. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. So tell me more about, um, Ubuntu, if I'm even pronouncing it correctly, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. And I mean, what it means and how did it change your life? Because I love this story. Oh my God, I love it. You know, so far, <laughs> I never get tired of telling the story. Um, when my my children are 12 and 13, and when they were like- Great again, ages. <laughs> Oof, they're interesting. I'll give them that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> 
Oh my God, I love them so much. I want to bonk their little heads together, but they're yeah, so Yeah, a lot of hormonal things going oh, on. Oh yeah, <laughs> mommy. And I'm like, I was cool like 10 minutes ago. What happened? So, um, so when they were really little, I stumbled, it was probably on social media and, and people who are watching this or listening to this have probably stumbled across the story as well. But it was about an anthropologist who was studying a tribe in Africa. Mm -hmm. And when he was waiting for his transportation to bring him to the airport, he was hanging out with some kids of the village. And he was like, hey, listen, I have some candy I bought in the city. Let's play a little game. He's like, I'm going to take this candy and I'm going to put it by the tree. I want you guys all to line up. And when I count to three, you're going to race to the tree. And whoever gets there first gets to have the candy. And all the kids are like, yay. And they all line up and they're all excited. And he's like, one, two three and on three they all linked arms and they all ran together mm. I always get a tingle like I always get like ooh when I say that but they all ran together and he was dumbfounded you know as you said like the western mentality and he goes over to the tree and they're all having fun and they're sharing the candy and they're eating and they're having a party mm. and he walks over to one of the girls and he's like oh my god why would you do this if you could have won all the and he's like flabbergasted and he goes why essentially why would you share Mm. Wow. she's like i am because we are how could i be happy if we're not all happy and i always was like like that ish but it just something clicked in my head this is how i'm raising my children and everything became ubuntu so much so that my kids um they didn't understand it wasn't a part of the general vernacular mm. like if one wasn't sharing like the other one would be like no it's not ubuntuing like they didn't just <laughs> everything was ubuntu right and so when I began to paint, fast forward a few years, it became Ubuntu art by Dana because it brought me so much joy to create. If it brought you joy, Ubuntu. And then the gallery, obviously Ubuntu Fish Gallery. Mm -hmm. So I forged my friendships under the concept of Ubuntu. I run my businesses under the concept of Ubuntu. I believe if the world adopted, I should say the world because there are sections of the world. Yeah, the I was getting ready to say there's a, a lot of areas where that's you know, common yeah. philosophy, whether it's Australia or Asia, or yeah, we've yeah. gotten we've gotten off course and some other civilized, if we will, place civilized, right? right. In so that, 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 yeah. So if our culture adopted the concept of Ubuntu, just in why do we have to compete so much? Why can't we just uplift and inspire one another and mm -hmm. work together? There's enough for all of us. Absolutely. The world would be a better place. It so. would. There, the neg negativity, toxicity, incivility, it, you know, it's, it's horrifying at times. And if you limit yourself to the news, you think that's all their ears, but there are a lot of people out there like us who really just want to share knowledge, share power and just grow and move forward. They're, they're out there folks, but you got to look, <laughs> you got to go look for them and you you got to be giving out what you want to get back. That's the other thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you want positivity, but you're totally negative and, uh, you know, critical that you, you got to attract what you're putting out there. So I can't agree with you more. And um, finduniquelyyou.com, which is a platform that I partnered up with an old college buddy. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much to say about it um, because we offer so much, but it really is a platform for all of those that you're referring to, you know, they're out there, right? And we're created. So if you are a creative type, if you have a passion that you want to share with others, whether it be to teach or to speak or to, that you you write, anything that you want to share um, and be with like-minded people, we we have created this platform for you to do that. We have workshops, mm -hmm. um, we have a library, a lot, we're new, we're babies, right? So a lot of it is like coming down the pike Right. But it is to cultivate this community of uh, of like minded people who want to uplift, inspire one another to to make the world a better place. So tell all your friends. Tell them, tell them, spread the word, spread the good news of Ubuntu. Yeah. So let's you you've alluded to your book a few times. Uh, let's talk about the ten recommandments. What inspired you to write this work? I know there's. It's based on your life experiences. Yeah. Was what was there a particular precipitating event, and how has it, you know, how have you used it to move forward in your journey? You want to laugh? 
um, I, I, in my twenties, I always joked that I would write a book because I knew I had colorful stories and an interesting mm -hmm. life experience, but I never knew what it would look like. And, you know, you just go about your life doing your thing. And in the spring of 2021, um, remember I own the gallery, I'm doing intuitive guidance. I have groups and workshops and it's mm -hmm. all about this stuff. But in spring of 2021, all four of us, my, two, my children, my, I told them 12 and 13, my husband and I, we all got COVID. And oh. we dropped, we dropped like dominoes. I was the last to go. Like I was like fighting it. I was like, you know, the, the, the rhinoceros at the tranquilizer door. I'm like, I'm fine. But all four of us. <laughs> and you know, if anybody, if you've had COVID or you know, anybody who's had COVID or any kind of flu or illness, you know, the first couple of days you think you're, think you're going to die. And then you get past that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're past that. You're just, you're in bed and it totally sucks and you're miserable. But what was happening was, because I'm a very busy on the go type person, even though mm -hmm. I'm working on, I'm working on that, I um, was still. And in my stillness, I started to get these profound ideas, things that I always talked about in my guidance sessions, mm -hmm. but coming in my head in such, with such profundity, I would grab my phone and I would write in my notes. Mm -hmm. And I would just in this, like, you know, analogies that you use and like little stories and stuff like that. And I would write them down. And when I started to feel a little bit better, I was like, let me create a document because I'll probably wind up doing like a lecture series or something at the gallery or some sort of workshop. And mm -hmm. it turned out there were 10 of them. And then I was like, so I organized them and I was like, you know what? There were like 10 pearls of wisdom. I'm like, let me write a little blurb about each of them. And it within like a week, I'm like, holy shit, I'm writing a book. And it literally wrote itself. So, you know, you know what be. inspired you to write 10 commandments? Yeah, I got COVID and there it is. Stuff. Well, I, I'm glad something good came out of that. Some right? uh, creativity, and I, and I think a lot of people got more organized, got creative, or just were able. You know, without all the stuff going on and pulling at you, 2020, it was crazy. Looking at my calendar and seeing it just empty, <laughs> just <laughs> empty. I hadn't had that since I was a teen. That I just had nothing to do, nowhere to go, no nothing to be, and I could really just indulge in, you know my pursuit yeah. my passions and I, I wrote a book as well so during COVID yep yeah nice. yeah see my, la my last book on uh self-publishing was written during COVID and you know it was one I had been planning to do for a minute so you know even even those down times to make the best of them and take advantage of those quiet times those down times and there's a reason like you said earlier what is the reason for this not just woe is me but why am I here and what am I supposed to gain or give at this moment in time? I, how, how can readers uh, get your book? It sounds like it's phenomenal. I haven't had a chance. In fact, I got, I need to get it. It's on my list. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's, I tell you, and, and, and you know, it's weird saying these things when it's yours, but anybody who has read it that whether I know them or not, because there's people, mm -hmm. you know, that contact me, everybody says the same thing when you're ready when you're ready to make the changes and ready to do the work, um, it's a, it's a game changer because I'm not like, I'm not in an ivory tower going, you know, this is what you should do. And I'm so great because this is what I did. Like, I don't paint myself prettily at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, listen, you know, this is what it looked like, but it's, you gotta be ready because I'm like in your face about it. I'm like, right. no, but, you know, you're not special. Like we all have our stories. It's yours. It's your story. And teaching people how to navigate their own, their own life. So where do you get it? So it's on, you know, like um, barnesandnoble.com, uh, uh, Amazon, obviously, walmart.com. It's, it's on my website. Like it's all these places. I think Amazon's always the best place because mm -hmm. we know Amazon is easy, but um, also, you can write a review on Amazon, but yes. uh, just, you know, I'm, saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> but I'm uh, gonna reveal ideally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, but keep the, it moving. But, yeah. <laughs> totally. But the, but I narrated the audio version. Mm -hmm. So the audio version self narrated is offered exclusively on finduniquelyyou.com. So you can either buy it in the shop Mm -hmm. If you want to hear it and you want to hear it told by me at this point, if you're not annoyed by me, it's worth the listen. Um, but the, um, 
but also there's a special now, if you take a workshop, you'll get the book as a gift for taking the workshop. So, but yeah, nice. so audiobook, finduniquelyyou.com, uh, paperback or Kindle, Amazon first and foremost. But if you Google it, I mean, I made up the word recommendment. So if you Google 10 recommendments, it'll tell you, you know, what you need to know. That's part of your creativity as well, being unique and a, and a very good marketer, I might add. Right, so. and making up words. Making up <laughs> words and phrases. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> well, anything else you want to share before we go? You really imparted some good information. I think this has been some soul food today. You know, there, there are a lot of people who just feel stuck and disempowered and you don't have to do what you're doing. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. I don't care what anybody says. You don't have to do it. Figure out where you're supposed to be and who you're supposed to be with. And yeah. I will give you the final words, my great guest, Dana Sardano. Uh, well, I, I just want to begin by saying that if anything that I said resonates with you, I teach workshops myself on finduniquelyyou.com based on, I, I, I've written, well, I'm I'm about to publish my third, but on the first two that I've written, I have workshops, and I also do I'm doing an author Q and A. Uh, I do them uh, every few months, mm -hmm. um, and those aren't like those are like under ten dollars. You know, you just come and we just you know you can ask questions, you can share your insights. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's really if you're not local, if you're not in Stewart, Florida, like that's the best place to find me. But what I really do want to say to you, Mo, is you're special and I appreciate you having me. We had met a brief meeting to talk about doing this and, and I liked you, but when you allow yourself, cause we have 15 minutes and we both had things on the schedule, you know, right. but when you allow yourself to just do what you love and be who you are and, and shine, you're amazing. You're, oh. you're amazing. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure.